Okay, welcome back, Ranch Simulator. Let us get stuff put away here. Whoop. Yeah, not like that. Um, let's see. Last episode, we cut a bunch of trees. And I asked if anybody would want to watch me cut them or if. Wait, what? Wait a minute. <clears throat> Where are all the trees that I cut? Oh, no way. Wait, didn't I did? Am I imagining things? Did I not cut a bunch of trees in the last episode? Okay, hold on. We're, we're going to jump over to the channel here in the video. Check which I did get. Uh, next episode I should be able to do some extraction. Okay. We're at 20 some percent. Um, get some and trees. then we'll be able to do grab some more oil. I should. Yeah, um, that, that's a lot of trees. And I will talk um, to you in the comments. That are no longer down. Okay. Um. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I guess we're uh, recutting trees. Uh, oh, I hate to put you all through that again, but they not when when you save the game, does it not? Keep the cut trees on the ground. I don't know. Has that happened to anybody else? At least it's not hard to cut trees, but it's like I just did all this. Must be a glitch. Or a bug, I mean. It's funny, since we've been on the stable branch, I've found more stuff unstable than, <laughs> than stable. Back to the stable, unstable branch because it's stabler than the stable branch. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Tongue twister. Or just for me. Holy, oh, see, like stuff like that. We go flying ten feet in the air. Okay, well, and you guys wanted to watch, so I'm just going to chop them, and I'm going to cut them up, and I'll do it real time on the camera. Appreciate the every second counts. <laughs> getting there driving it driving it it's uh it's the closest I've been when I first got the channel up and going when I first started focusing on it I had um, dino riders on my channel and I had at the time I had like 10,000 watch hours a month or, or for the year something like that or more it could have been more because I had a million views was at 990 thousand or 90 it was it was like really close to a million views and I got I hit my thousand subscribers probably 20 late 2020 2020 or early 2021 it was 
and I went to monetize and they denied me because I had Dino Riders on there. I had somebody else's uh, content and I didn't have it edited enough. I just put it on there basically so people had it to watch, you know. But they wouldn't let me monetize my channel even though it was all of my numbers weren't not from just Dino Riders. But it was the majority of my watch hours was from that. So I went from having like 10,000 watch hours to having 2,000 watch hours or 1,500 watch hours or something like that after deleting everything that they classified as not monetizable, I guess, or something. But So since 2020, when I started focusing on the channel, I've been striving to get my 4,000 watch hours been pumping a ton of money into the channel it'll be nice to get to where I can actually start getting some of the money back out of the channel you know it's like because I invest in cameras and computer equipment and computer like controllers like steering wheel and flight controllers and stuff like that and I don't really even use anymore because I don't really play those games right now but I will again someday but oh well we're getting there. Appreciate it, everybody, for watching. You are what makes the channel go. Put a lot of hours into it, and it's nice to get to the point where I can be appreciated for it. My first, I was looking back at my numbers, and I've had the channel since like 2009, I think I made the channel, basically just uh, was going to be just to make f like family videos and stuff like that, that so family could watch them. And uh, I got my first subscriber it was October, what was it, October 26th or 29th, something like that, 2012 was my first subscriber. So we have come a long way. We are at 3,080 subscribers as of this morning. So if you're subscribed, thank you so much. You're a amazing group of people. Appreciate your support. It's quantity, not qu quality, not quantity, right? If YouTube would actually share my channel with more people, then I have a feeling I would have a lot more subscribers and a lot more watch hours if they shared it. But with being a variety channel, I don't know if it's, I think it's YouTube doesn't know what to do with it. What they need to do is just share it with every category. It'd be nice if they would like show each video to like a million people. Each video got shown to a million people for, say, even just for, like, eight hours. And then, you know, if you didn't get, if you didn't hit a certain amount, then drop it back to, you know, fewer. You know, drop it back to, like, 750,000 people. Show it to them for another six hours and see how they deal with it, you know, if they like it. like I used to tell my employees when they were selling stuff if you don't tell somebody about something 
they're not going to know if they're it's something that they'd want. So every person you come in, pretend like it's the product that you're selling is what they're looking for. They may not know it, but you know if you don't let them know what it is that you're selling, there there's a zero percent chance of getting a sale. Same way with the you know showing the videos. If they don't show it to enough people, you're never going to get the views you deserve on a video. It's almost like they want you to fail, you know. It's like you would think they want to make money off your channel in some way through getting a percentage of profit from ad sales or whatever. You'd think they would want you to succeed by showing videos to more people. It just never feels that way as a creator. And it feels like they tie your hands behind your back when you know, they show a video to 10,000 people when there's millions of people out there that watch the channel and probably would love the content, but they have no idea you're there because YouTube doesn't show it to them. That's what's the frustrating thing about, about being a creator. You go and you look and there's like find channels that have like a million subscribers and they have content exactly like yours. It's like okay, what's different about their content to their content to your content, you know. That they have a million views and you have a hundred views.
That must be where you go to get the horses. Horse uh, auction. I do have a couple pieces of meat in the back there too, I could go sell. Ah! There we go. Yike. definitely see the, the oil rig a lot better in that location than it was in the last one. This is that instant where I wish I could cut these trees because then I would uh, make a road. Oh, that's the other thing I want to do. I want to check the, the real estate office. I don't remember ever looking at that. Okay, we got 42 left for fuel and we're at 43 for let's add some fuel to it oh where'd I go where'd that oil gas can go there it is Okay, let's grab our oil drum. Let's get us some cash, because I need to get... That's only going to be 42, but it's going to be something at least. I can use that to buy s some odds and ends that we need. Okay, so well, I have to stop at the hardware store. I'm going to just sell that meat at the hardware store. I know it's going to be cheaper than if I took it to the burger place, but I don't really want to make two stops. Before I try hitting that real estate office up, see what that's all about. not too bad let's see what did we want so 199 for that 750 for, see oh should I just should I buy another cheap one or should I just keep saving I don't know I don't know I could use a cooler too see if we get a cooler can we afford the cooler and another table saw like that yes we can okay I want to get a cooler because that we get that meat and I want to be able to store it instead of it scattered all over the place. Uh, we do need some more frames just in case we come across some bees. We'll just buy two more for right now. Fireworks. Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen it, a video where somebody did a firework. Not right now, though. <laughs> uh, let's see, I don't need another oil drum quite yet. Let's check out. Okay. Oh. Oh, wow. What happened to my... <laughs> yeah, see? 
stable branch. <laughs> suck it. it's like quicksand oh, I should put those back there ah that's what it was I had said it because it was the trailer was on the pad that's why I did that and we're gonna put the frame back here Okay, now we got those two table saws. Oh, wait a minute. Let's do this too. Just. That. And I want to put the gas cans up here. At least the ones that have gas in them. Eh, all three. I do like the placement system in this. It's really nice to where you can you can really like precision put stuff in places. Let's sleep. Sleep save. There we go. Perfect. Hopefully that's saving my logs being on the ground. <laughs> okay, next stop real estate office. Remember exactly what it does. I know we've been there. I just didn't pay attention to it. Plus, I want to find another oil spot, but I haven't looked at the internet yet for it. So, I've been busy. Okay. Oh, that's the bank. It says bank on it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, they're as loans. Oh my goodness. How did I not? Oh my god. I just didn't. I didn't even think of it. Okay, get a $2,500 loan. 25%. So it's a 86 day loan. Thing is, is, oh, if I get that, then I can get the good saws. I'll sell the old ones back. I don't know. Uh, maybe not right now. Taking a loan is probably not the best idea. Not yet, at least. But it's good to know that there's a, a bank. It says bank. I don't believe I... Because I was like, I wish there was a bank with loans. Sure enough, there it is.
place he belongs. Why is that one shut off on me? Yeah, I don't know if I like that. gather a whole mess of them, put them on the cart, and cart them back over here. Is there a log cart? Let me know in the comments. I'll, to, I'll, I'll try to look to myself, but saves time if you guys have seen it already. It would really be nice if there was. Like a cart on wheels or something that I could run around and put like 20 logs on the cart. Can even be motorized or something would be nice if it was a, like a motorized pull cart or something we could load the, like a, a log trailer you can hook up to your UTV or something. And that way I could just run around, gather them all up, and then bring them over and right to the, right to the saws. So you can see how I'm starting to get to where they're, they're all so far apart. I'm running all over the place to pick up the log. I'll have to get moved closer to the logs. They keep getting farther away. Uh, Sven and Oli they, they were working on a road crew and uh, they they were like they did the first day they were drawing lines on, on the new paved road they were with a can of paint and paintbrush and the first day they did they did like five miles or something like that and then the second day the, the boss was like why you did, you did five miles the first day why why did you only do two miles today? And then the, the, the next day, it was like, or no, it was two miles today. And, and uh, they're like, well, it takes a lot longer to walk back to that pan can of paint. Because <laughs> it was like, they left the can of paint at the very beginning, so they had walked the whole five miles to get a paint full of, a paintbrush full of paint. Yeah, I screwed that one up totally up tonight. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking about my, who told me that joke. I can't remember, I think it was my dad. Because when we were kids, we would all ride up in the front seat of the, the truck. It was fun, we'd play games, and dad would tell jokes. Those were good memories because we had an eight hour drive to get up here because we were living in Illinois. And to get here, it'd take eight hours. So we'd all sit in the front because it was a single cat, wasn't an extended cab or anything, and there was four of us my mom, dad, my brother, and I. And we'd all sit in the front seat and we'd play games, and word games, and stuff like that. Dad put jokes and stuff. Like the okay, what was the it was another one. Hopefully I don't screw this one up completely. Um there was two hobos walking along. No offense to any hobos out there. I'm not, you know, back then we weren't a bunch of whiny. <laughs> Nobody was offended by the littlest thing like they are today. Um but it was two hobos walking along and they come across this dead rabbit and they were like oh man oh we're so hungry he's like but uh, he's like the one guy's like oh no you have all of it so he one guy is yum 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 he eats, eats the dead rabbit all up and stuff and then they start walking a little farther and they're like they come across the another a, a, a dead squirrel and they're like the guy's like okay, I had the last 
sure you don't want this one. It's like, no, no. No, you go ahead and get it. Okay, yell me my ease up real quick. And they're walking along again. They come across a, a dead skunk. And they're like, oh, I don't know. I, I'm hungry, but I'm not that hungry. And the other guy's, well, I'm still hungry. So I'll eat it. So the guy that ate the first two was like, well, he ate it all. You know, he ate it all. And then a couple seconds later, he gets like, oh, I think I ate too much. And then boom, throws them off. The guy's like, ah, perfect. That's what I was waiting for. Hot meal. <laughs> like, oh, yuck. But, <laughs> I also don't know. Yeah. So, if you've ever heard that joke, let me know in the comments. That's what you've heard before. Yeah, it was always fun. My dad would do Donald Duck. He could do a really good Donald Duck voice. Thank <laughs> you. 
remember I was I always had my headset you know, I was listening to, to cassettes you know, as I'm riding my bike and stuff and I was riding along with this park looking at the animals and stuff I looked up there was this elderly guy with a cane with his like must have been his granddaughter or something standing next to him holding her hand and he's like shaking his cane at me and I'm like I, I took my headset off yeah but what do you, what do you want I was only I'm like at the top of the hill, pretty far away from stuff, and I was like, yeah, I was wondering what he wanted, you know. And he's like, get off your bike, I'm giving it to my granddaughter. I'm like, seriously? Um, <laughs> old guy, you can't even walk without a cane, and you're trying to steal my bike in front of your granddaughter? I'm like, okay, side is wrong way. <laughs> I was like, that was interesting. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're going to try to tell me that I have to get off my bike? So you can give it to your granddaughter. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> and let's see, I used to ride my bike to school, like to grade school, in the summer sometimes. It was fun. I'd, and I, I've always liked like bikes, not as much anymore. More when I was you know, kid, teen, you know, early. Twenties mid-twenties. I like to have the big system in my cars and stuff like that with the big speakers, a lot of bass and stuff. Even back to when I was a kid, you know, it's like riding my bike to school. I, I had it rigged up. I had two portable small speakers that would plug into my cassette player. I had my cassette player rigged up onto my frame of my bike and I had the speakers taped to the handlebars. So I had a I had a sound system built into my bike. It was pretty cool. <laughs> right along it was like I was only well it was in grade school. I'd ride my bike with the I was probably seventh, eighth grade. Probably more eighth grade. And I would uh, Usually was rap at that time. Public Enemy here. Um, the others. It was all the old school gangster rap kind of stuff. It's just the area that I lived in. It was the kind of music that we heard. Once I got into high school, it was like a cake walk because how hard grade school was. Well, it was all the way up through eighth grade. And my first day in high school, it was like, it was a ha the first half day. I saw a fight. I'm like, okay. And then the next day, there was two fights. And the next day, there was two fights. And there, I saw a fight a day. Every day, there was fights. Two, if it was a good day, it was one fight. In the hallways. And they just, they weren't strict at all. It's like there would be a fight, and the same people would be back fighting with somebody else the next day. Because it was just, the school was just overrun by gangs. And stuff. I'd be sitting in class, and all, all the kids sitting around me, and they had gang signs all over their binders and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, what gang are you in? I'm like, um, yeah, not in a gang. And they're like, what? We didn't think there was anybody out there. It wasn't in a gang. I'm like, yeah, well, you met one. <laughs> it was good, though, because I was, I was friends with everybody, so it's like, I'd be walking down the hall, I'd be waving to everybody, everybody knew my name and stuff like that. 
So I kept my head down and just was kind to everybody. And so I never had problems with anybody, which was nice. My senior class, well, my freshman class coming into school, there was 896 kids in my freshman class. And my senior graduating, graduating class had 296. Yep. There was... Uh, dead? <laughs> Uh, dropouts, expelled, uh, just due to gang violence, and so it was it. You know, you look at the statistics, you know, that's not very good. <laughs> 890, you know, 897 kids down to 290-some. So I never liked. <laughs> I didn't like grade school because it was so hard. Because I have um, dyslexia and it made learning difficult. And it was quite a few years. I didn't go back to school. I went to college then. I didn't go to college until I was probably 30. I think I was 29, 30 years old, something like that. What year was it? Yeah, it might have been later. I, not 100. It was 2006 I went back to school. I graduated in 1995, so graduated in 95 from high school, and I went, didn't go back to college until 2006. And then I just went to a, a community, the community college, and I got certified in heating and air conditioning. But that was a lot better, because once I... When I did that, I, I never thought I would ever go back to school. I just, I disliked it so much. But uh, the college actually offered, you know, to have like testing done so I could, you know, find out why it was always so hard for me to learn and everything. And, um, so I went to a university to get tested and, you know, had uh, my ability to, for short term memory is horrible and dyslexic and, and stuff so they offered the college offered tutors and or well not just tutors but for testing uh, they had note takers and they had for the testing I could go to the counselor and they would read the test to me because my reading comprehension is horrible but my my understanding is great it's like if I did the test reading it myself I'd get a D if somebody read it to me, because I knew the I knew the material. If somebody read it to me, I'd get an A. So that that was a godsend to be able to have, um, you know, that option to have the test read to me. Because then I knew that I, because I knew the material for everything, you know. It's the hands-on aspect of the stuff. That's why I went into heating and air conditioning. Was the hands-on stuff. I could I could pick it up and retain it. But for that side of it, I when I went into the heating and air, because I had a job lined up probably since 2004. The owner was good. This is a good family friend, and he was like, "Oh man." You know, if you're looking to get into this, we'll, we'll hire you right now. Well, I was like, I wasn't expecting that for one, but I was like, well, I would like to, you know, like get the certifications and stuff because they were willing to just train. I didn't have to go to college for it and stuff. But I was like, well, I would be best if I had the certification just in case if I ever, you know, it came time to where if I had to get a job somewhere else or something, I'd, you know, it would be easier for me to get if I had had the certification. So he was like, "Oh, we'll hold the job for you then." And, you know, and I so I went to college for two years and and stuff. And I came back, got the job, and worked, uh, started in May, I think, after school got out. It was so it was the beginning of June. June until September, 
we were super busy. I, we were doing five jobs a day. You know, there was five jobs running at one time. You know, and I was in the ins install department, so we were installing furnaces and, and duct work and things like that. Um, well, in September, September 11th or 17th or something like that. I think it was September 17th or so. I hurt my back really bad. I'm still fighting it to today, you know. I'm still suffering from back pain from that instant. So I was on uh, disability comprehension, you know, pay. So I was making 75% of my income while I was in rehabilitation and stuff like that. Finally, after from September until January, I was in excruciating pain, trying you know, physical therapy and and all different things, trying to get um, you know back to working order. Well, everybody knows what early 2009, late 2008, early 2009 uh, was. The economy dropped out. So, when I finally was back, I called him up and I was like, okay, the doctor finally approved me to come back to work. And he's like, well, yeah, right now, we are currently laid off everybody except for one, like, one person in the department. Because they went from having the five jobs before I got hurt to running one job. So we went from, like, a six, five, six, seven man crew to one guy working and well I was low man on the totem pole because I had just started so I was first to get laid off and I had just got I was like I was thinking okay well now I'm on unemployment which is not 75% of what you make so I'm making less I was like I should have stayed hurt <laughs> I was making more money I didn't realize I was going to be coming back to not having a job you know, so I, too bad I just didn't stay, like, to where I couldn't work longer. It would have been better, money-wise. Um, so I was on, and the nice thing is, is I didn't have to look for work, because, so, that was, like, probably my favorite year, where I was on unemployment. I wasn't hurt anymore, so I could, I was snowmobiling. I had, I was buying a bunch of inch sleds. I had a dozen vintage sleds. So, you know, I was working on those, a snowmobile, and I had, I didn't have to look for work, so I didn't, for getting my unemployment. So I, I had that. I was, was awesome. And, uh, so that went on for a year and a half where I just wasn't finding it. All of a sudden, well, the unemployment kind of ran out. So I'm, then I'm looking everywhere trying to find work and you know you go into a place and all the guys are sitting by the desk and they're like are you kidding uh work why do you think we're sitting at the desk <laughs> it's like if we had work we wouldn't be here in the office you know and that was every place I went even you know late it was 2010 or something like that by this point Yep, that's a couple other stories. Sorry if I'm boring you <laughs> with my my talk. <laughs> I guess if you didn't want to hear it, you would have skipped. So <laughs> yeah, that's what it would have been. Well, we're getting a lot of a lot of the boards going on here. I'm gonna have to. Um, I'm not really sure what we use all these boards for yet. <laughs> But <laughs> we got a few of them here. We might do some more board work. Hopefully they don't disappear once I save and start over. You know, once I... You know, let's turn these off for a second. Because uh, we're going to move them. Because we want to get closer to some of these boards some of these logs because right now I'm just running 
too much. I'm trying to think of more stories I can tell. But I'm kind of running out. <laughs> I, I've got a million of them, but I can't think of any right now. Okay, let's set this. And maybe we'll go stockpile. I know we can um we can build a storage for logs. I'm not sure how many we can store in the log rack. We need twelve planks. Let's uh let's go build some log storage. Cause we can use planks for it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these we're gonna build some storage in the in the garage over there and then we'll take and we'll stockpile all these logs all these boards and then we'll have them there for when we want to do a building job uh, let's see what other stories can I do um, beekeeping. How I got started with beekeeping. Uh, let's see, it was two, 1993. My dad's friend had a, a beekeeper that had hives on his property. And the beekeeper, um, I don't know if he had passed away or if he just abandoned the hives or whatever it was. And uh, he was he was like, well, if you come help me burn this stuff, get rid of it off the property, I can have whatever, you know, good so I can take whatever I want. And we got there, and well, there was, the bees were gone. There was, there was some, like, robbers and stuff like that. There was no actual live hives or anything. And uh, we, you know, we're helping them get, and I was take, I took all the, the really good, parts so I was like all the good boxes and frames and stuff I had really never thought of doing bees I've I studied ants since I was like six five six years old um, and then I started collecting wasps and reading about bees and, and wasps and stuff like that probably from seven eight years old when I got a little faster when I could collect the wasps without getting stung where I could escape I was fast enough to run away um, but I had those boxes and I'm like well that might be fine I enjoy that kind of stuff so I started um, I had the boxes all set up in the backyard and the bees were coming in and, and robbing and I, I had no I, you know I didn't know much about beekeeping or anything at the time so I was it's like oh I've got bees and stuff like that and, well I didn't realize yeah they were just robbing there was another hive in the area that was coming and stealing the honey that was in the boxes that I had brought back and stuff so I didn't actually have bees but it was neat to actually see bees in person you know I hadn't really hadn't really seen them in person it was always through pictures and stuff like that well every day you know for the year my soft my freshman junior year my junior year in high school um, I'd spend it in the library because then I was reading, I was reading books about beekeeping, and I, would, I was reading, um, watching videos, and talking to other beekeepers. I had a great friend that lives up, lived up here, um, around the lake. I would go with him, and he would, you know, take me out to his bee yards and stuff. He had quite a few hives, uh, and he taught me a lot of, a ton about beekeeping and stuff. And it was funny, like he told me that yeah, because I'd come up and we would. You know, he would teach me what he could and stuff, and then I'd go home and I would uh, read and watch videos and stuff like that, and then come back and he's like, "Oh my goodness!" He's like, the, the, "The next time I came up, he's like, oh my goodness, you're teaching me stuff now," because <laughs> I was I was doing so much research for that first year, for, for the year of ninety three, you know, nineteen ninety three, um, and then the spring of nineteen ninety four, I ordered. Two packages of bees. Well, I ordered packages, and my brother ordered package because we were going to go in together and do this together um, to make some money and 
stuff. So, um, I was doing all the like the work and stuff on it, and, and he did a few things and stuff. But it got to where, um, you know, I was doing all the work, and then he would get half the half the money. So I bought him out eventually. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna buy you out because I'm doing all the work. <laughs> Um, so I just paid him back what he paid in for all the equipment and stuff like that. And it went from being Mark and David's Beavis to, to Mark's Beavis, which it's been Mark's Beavis since, you know, for f the inception, you know, it was Mark's, Mark and David's Beavis for, for a year or two. And then it went to Mark's Beavis, which is now, and that's what I run my, um, my being wasp removal service out of is Mark's Beavis. Um, you can always go on and look up Mark's www.marksbebas.net and uh, you can see my website for that. I don't do any of the honey or anything anymore. Um, it was it was a lot of fun, you know. For I had 60 hives for for quite a few years. Uh, sold honey at I had seven different stores that I was selling at and stuff. While I was working at a video. I was managing a video rental store. Um, and I was selling honey at there, and I was selling honey at different um, store. I had I had honey for sale at the at a nail salon <laughs> that was next door to the video rental store. I was selling honey at the vent, the, rent, the, the rental store that I was working at too. Um, so it was kind of nice. It was you know a side thing. Had 60 hives. It was it, it took up a lot of time. 60 hives takes a lot of time. But I was making a lot of a lot of honey every year. Um, but then. You know, I, I started working for a, you know, I was working at the rental store. I had the time for the bees and stuff too, but um, that wasn't, I wasn't making enough money at that. So I, w I wanted to get to where I was making more money. So I started, I interviewed at the Suncoast Motion Picture Company in the, in the mall. I don't know if, do you remember, anybody else remember uh, Suncoast? It was a music land group, uh, music of Sam Goody, um, a mall based, uh, video store kind of thing where it sold sold movies and stuff well I was I went in there as a field man a floor manager and then within oh a few months I I was winning sales contests and stuff like that and, um, I got promoted to assistant manager and I was assistant manager for a while um, and, and you know at this point it was like well I can't manage 60 hives while working full-time doing this it just wasn't was not possible you know because um, it just took up too much time compared you know I was working a lot of hours um, so I kind of got out of the bees I, I still had a hive or two, still had a few hives but it wasn't the 60 that I used to have you know um, so I took and I uh, quit kind of drifted away from the bees unfortunately and and got into, you know, who became a general manager of the store um, after just a short time. And I did that for a while, and I went to Best Buy. I was working at Best Buy for three years, and all these different things. I kind of got tired of working for other people. You know, I, and I was doing the, the bee and wasp removal stuff the whole time, you know, that I was uh, keeping bees, and, or a uh, working and stuff I still had bees and I was doing bee and wasp removals the whole time it's um we just had kind of like a side job and stuff but that's a little bit of my work you know what I did working wise um because now it's just to do the bee and wasp removal in the summer for a couple of weeks and to make my money which you know the profit margin on it's really good um so I'm able to pay off all my bills and stuff, pay off all my credit cards at the, the end of the summer. And then I live off that, you know, that stuff. So really don't want to have to do that anymore because then I have to go to Illinois and I don't want to go to Illinois anymore. So um, hopefully we can get this channel monetized so I can start making the money to make a living at it. <laughs> and then I can just focus on making you guys videos to watch, which would be really cool make it that as uh, income okay I'm not gonna stack anymore I'm gonna go build that what I was talking about in the first place we are going to build a uh, wood rack so we can store this 
wood. Okay, now. Yeah, I was a little too close. What's in here? Oh, wonder why that's sitting over there. Okay, well, let's see. How's our bees doing? Oh, we're at 100%. Let's grab our smoker. We can make a little. Can I get around there? Yeah. Nope. Shoot. Parked wrong. Okay, let's grab our smoker. anything about my bees you know and, and stuff because I do have old videos from like 94 and stuff like that on my channel here go to go to the playlist Mark's Bee Biz and uh, take it take a look at it um, you'll be able to see see my bee yards and stuff all the different hives I had I, I raised Queens for a while that was a lot of fun because the <coughs> species of bee I like the most is a, a breed called Starline well they don't breed it anymore got overbred or something but they were the they were super honey producers and they were super gentle they were they were, they were amazing bees uh, they were called starline okay let's uh that'll be should be good Whoop. oh these buttons it might be a kind of a waste of uh, resources building these racks but this would be kind of neat to see to have them you know the logs all in one spot hopefully they hold a lot of planks to make this worth the 12 that it's put into it oh it holds 200 of them oh wow maybe I didn't need to make two <laughs> It's nice and it kind of tells you how many you have so you can kind of go in there and say okay well I need this many to to make this it save you time you know trying to count out count out the boards Wow I guess I had quite a few boards going down here. What time is it? I don't know what time is it. I want to look at my clock, my phone real quick here. 
find it where I've got it set. Uh, 7.30. So it must be light outside. I saw my curtains closed in my room, so I don't know. Nice. 200 boards right there. Wow. It's kind of a not much action, a lot of talking <laughs> episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think we're going to leave off right here. I'm going to get and save. Hopefully uh, we'll save indoors and maybe it will uh, still all be here when I come back to play again next. <laughs> okay, well thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you in the comments.